Dream Booth is awesome. You can turn yourself into an RPG character, a bodybuilder, a SoundCloud rapper, or a fashion icon. And of course, it can also be used to train new styles and do useful things like create game assets. Here I trained a Dream Booth model using treasure chests. This allows us to create new treasure chests in the same style. For example, ice chests, a lava chest maybe. We can play around with all different types of subject matter. We can even create things like steampunk chests, which came out pretty nicely, I think. So in this video, we're gonna be using Dream Booth to design assets for a strategy game. If you want to get started with Dream Booth, I put a previous video together about how you can run Dream Booth using Google Colab for free. Another option you can also look at is running it locally using Automatic 11.11 Dream Booth extension. You just go to the extensions tab, hit the load button, and then press install on the Dream Booth extension. Once it's installed, refresh your browser, then go to the Dream Booth tab. Under the create model section, just create a new model. You only have to do this once. Once the model's ready, then you can go to the Train Model tab and start entering in the details of the model that you want to train. When it comes to training styles for game assets, I've put together some recommendations for the kind of uh, configuration that I find works really well. When it comes to training the text encoder, it's a good idea to not train it at 100% if you have that option. Alright, let's start designing the game. So the first thing that popped in my head was this cyberpunk game from the 90s, but I couldn't actually remember what it was called. Fortunately, some quick Googling and from the help of the lethal carrot, um, I managed to find the game that I was thinking of, which we can use for inspiration. It's called Chaos Overlords. And as you can see, the graphics are pretty simplistic, <laughs> but they actually had some pretty cool ideas in terms of the way the Gaming Connects worked. So you have the entire map is broken up into different sectors and each sector has three buildings on it. So let's make an isometric map. First thing is we just need some isometric game assets to use for our data set. I then ran these through Dream Booth to train a new style, this time using Stable Diffusion 2 768 model. I did some testing and I found the 768 model works really well for things like game assets because the high resolution just allows it to capture a little bit more of the detail. After you've trained the model, you'll get a checkpoint file and then you just need to drop it into whatever UI you're using. Now, once you start prompting it, you, you might find that a few things could happen. It could be overfitting a bit, which means that the outputs look really similar to the source images. If that's the case, you can try using one of the checkpoints that ran for a lower number of steps. You can also try adjusting your prompt by adding more strength to the other keywords. Once I find a generation I like, I move to the image to image tab, run it through again to generate more variations. For upscalers, you can either use the upscales on the extras tab, or you can run the SD upscale script on the image to image tab, which is what I used here because I find that for these kind of things, it tends to give a lot more detail. The next thing we need to do is generate some cyberpunk gangs. The cool thing is, even though this model was only trained on isometric buildings, because we didn't use any regularization images, it still works on other subject matter. So we don't really need to switch models. Of course, if you wanted to, you could always train a separate model for characters. Once I had a base image that I liked, I just ran it through image to image again, cutting it out and adding a white background. And then all it was a matter of doing was just updating the prompt. In this case, I generated some cyberpunk nuns, some cyberpunk soldiers, you know, various different gang members are really easy to generate by just updating the prompt and, you know, setting the denoising strength relatively high. So next up, we just need to generate some portraits for the gangs. I started with the gang of nuns. So one thing you might notice is because we're using a Dream Booth model, we don't actually have to really add much to our prompt in terms of the prompt itself, quality keywords or negative keywords. And even though we didn't train the model on any portraits, we're still getting pretty consistent results, which is pretty cool. 
While Stable Diffusion 2 isn't without its flaws, I find it is pretty good at certain, certain art styles, especially when it's fine tuned. The 768 model seems to pick up detail really well, and I kind of like the output when it comes to these sort of 3D render styles. Depending on your project, it's definitely worth trying out Stable Diffusion 2, particularly the 768 model, especially if you're planning on doing fine tuning, just to see what the results are like and how they compare to the 1.5. Alright, so the next asset we need to create is the character portraits. The original game features these little portraits along the top of the screen, which represent each player essentially in the game. Of course, because this game came out in like 1996, they are extremely low resolution. Thankfully though, 26 years later we now have new technology, so we can take these incredibly pixelated images and AI enhance them using image to image. Frankly, I find this pretty incredible how well it works, considering how blurry the original source images were. One of the things to keep in mind if you're looking at doing this is if you want it to stick pretty close to the original image then it's best to kind of take a few passes over the images. Start with a low strength, run it, increase the strength a little bit, run it again and just kind of slowly dial up the denoising strength until you get something that you really like. So here's the final concept. I dropped in the portraits that we created along with the gang portraits and a few other UI elements just to kind of give a bit of a sense of what it might look like. So hopefully this video demonstrates some different techniques that might be useful. Personally I think that Dream Booth has a ton of potential for creative projects. I like the way that it provides really consistent results and gives a lot of control over the style and subject matter of the output. Once again thanks for watching and see you next time.